This presentation will summarize the identification of the neck force ring training kinase as a ciliary protein that interacts with the homologs ARPAGIF1 and ARPAGIF1-like protein. Let's start with a brief introduction on cilia. Cilia are evolutionary conserved organelles, which are present as antennas on the cell membrane of several different species, as shown here. Cilia can regulate fluid movements by beating in an orchestrated fashion, or they can act as sensors, transducing signals from the extracellular environment into a cellular response. Also, in our human body, cilia are of vital importance for the correct functioning of several organ systems. For example, in the nose for chemosensation, in the kidney for fluid flow, in the respiratory system for transport of mucus, in the inner ear for hearing, and in photoreceptors of the eye for vision. If something goes wrong in the function or formation of cilia, this can affect all these organs. Indeed, a class of human diseases caused by ciliary dysfunction has been recognized. These diseases are also known as ciliopathies. They can affect several organs, but differ in severity. In some ciliopathies, only one organ system is affected, such as for Leber congenital amaurosis, which only involves blindness, while for other ciliopathies a full-blown ciliary phenotype can be observed as for Joubert syndrome, in which, apart from eye problems, also kidney and brain problems and the presence of extra digits can be observed. To explain these differences, we need to gain more insight in the genes and their encoded proteins that are mutated in these ciliopathies. This slide shows several ciliopathy proteins which are under study in our lab. Interestingly, we and other groups have found that these proteins physically interact with each other, forming a multi-protein network. The actual function of this network is still unknown. The aim of our studies is to unravel the role of this network by expanding it further to unveil links to functional protein modules. In the study that is the subject of this presentation, we analyzed the interaction networks of the protein homologs ARPAGRIP1 and ARPAGRIP1-like protein. While ARPAGRIP1 mutations lead to Leber congenital amaurosis, only affecting the eyes, ARPAGRIP1-like mutations are associated with a more severe Joubert syndrome. We made use of the tandem affinity purification method to dissect the ARPAGRIP1 and ARPAGRIP1-like protein networks. In this method, your protein of interest is expressed in hec 293 T cells as a fusion protein to a strep flag tag. Endogenous proteins present in the cells can then bind to your protein of interest, so native protein complexes are formed. Subsequently, cells are lysed and protein complexes are purified in two tandem steps, making use of the strep and flag moieties of the tag on your protein of interest. Then the isolated proteins are analyzed via mass spectrometry, and bioinformatic methods are used to cluster the interactors. Also, further validation of interactions can be performed in pull-down or co-IP experiments. In this way, you can build up your interaction network. Interestingly, we identified the NEC4 serine training kinase as the best interactor for both ARPAGRIP1 and ARPAGRIP1-like protein. Why was NEC4 so interesting to us? It belongs to a family of kinases which have been implicated in cell cycle regulation. However, recent studies have also linked some NECs to ciliary functions. NEC1 mutations, for example, were identified in human patients suffering from the ciliopathy short rib polydactyly syndrome, while in murine models NEC1 mutations caused polycystic kidney disease, which is also a hallmark of ciliopathies. Also NEC8 mutant mice showed kidney cysts and NEC8 mutations were found as a rare cause for a human renal cystic disease. These clues indicated that also NEC4 could be a putative ciliary gene, which prompted us to further characterize NEC4. We were fortunate that a commercial rabbit polyclonal antibody against NEC4 was available from Apnova. We successfully used this antibody to stain for NEC4 in ciliated cells. In this image, cilia are stained in blue, 
upper grip one like is stained in green and neck four is stained in red. You can see that neck four specifically localizes at the base of the cilium, just below the transition zone region where upper grip one like can be found. Now we discovered that neck four localizes to cilia. We also wanted to assess its localization in several ciliated tissues. We therefore tested the NEC4 antibody from ABNOVA on sections of red tissues. First we looked at the retina, which is the light sensitive layer at the back of the eye where the photoreceptor cells are present. The outer parts of photoreceptors are specialized cilia. In these photoreceptors we found NEC4 to localize to thread-like structures just below the connecting cilium. This pattern resembled that of rutatin, a structural component of the ciliary rootlet, which is depicted in the figure on the left in yellow. A co-staining with rutletin indeed showed that NEC4 co-localizes with rutletin. We also performed co-staining of NEC4 and ARPGIP1 like and an indirect co-staining with ARPGIP1. These images show that there is a small region of co-localization at the base of the connecting cilium which indicates that the interaction between NEC4 and the two homologs could have biological significance. We also stained for NEC4 in cilia of the kidney. Again, we found NEC4 in a ciliary rootlet, and also we observed co-localization of arpigrip one like with NEC4 at the ciliary base. Also, for staining of brain cilia, which are motile cilia lining the brain ventricles, we found NEC4 to localize to rootlets and to co-localize with arpigrip one like at the proximal ends of the cilia. Now we firmly established NEC4 as a ciliary protein. We wanted to gain more insight in its actual function in the cilium. We therefore performed a ZIRNA knockdown experiment in ciliated cells to assess the effects of NEC4 deficiency on cilium assembly. Upon downregulation of NEC4, we observed a significant decrease in cilium assembly, suggesting a role for NEC4 in cilium integrity. Together, our data define NEC4 as a candidate gene for ciliopathies, especially those involving eye, brain and kidney phenotypes. Finally, I would like to acknowledge all co-workers on this project and thank the Dutch Association for Scientific Research for financial support.